it's gonna be real difficult for me to not make videos somewhat relating to the NHL draft over the next few days because the draft lottery concluding has just sparked so many topics that I can talk about and share my opinions with you that I think are really valuable. So instead of talking about Lafreniere again for the second time today, let's talk about the guy who for years people said was going to go second after Lafreniere. Not Tim Stutzla. Nah, that guy wasn't really considered to go second until earlier this year. But Quinton Byfield. Now, the second overall pick belongs to the Los Angeles Kings, and I know the Kings have a big fan base. So, as a YouTuber who knows his stuff about prospects and who wants to educate people out there, if you're an LA Kings fan and you don't know who exactly Quinton Byfield is and why he is so highly touted, then let's talk about him here today. I want to open your eyes and I want to make you see why. You guys are gifted. You LA folk over there, oh my goodness, you guys have gotten a gift with the second overall pick. Now, I said that Quinton Byfield should go to the Los Angeles Kings in my mock draft video yesterday. Yes, I did. In the comments, some people said, oh, why is Byfield going second? It should be this other guy, Tim Stutzla or whoever. I know that. But Quinton Byfield to me is going to go second overall. He has been established as that second overall prospect this entire time. Sure. The arguments do exist to take other people at second, and we have talked about those arguments in the past, but when it comes to my own personal opinion, it is Quinton Byfield. Who is Quinton Byfield? Well, he is a center. And if you're an LA Kings fan, you're looking at that and you're saying, what? Why would we want a center? We already have Alex Turcotte. We signed him. He's going to play on our team next year. We got Gabe Velarde too. He's probably going to play on the team. Same with Tyler Madden, who was acquired in the Toffoli trade. He's a really good center. He's small, but hey, he's going to be great. You made a video about Tyler Madden earlier in the month, Lego. And we also have Jared Anderson Dolan in the system and Akil Thomas. And we got a lot of centers. Why do we want a guy who's a center? Well, Quinton Byfield is not just a center. He is a guy who is six foot four, but he skates like he's five foot eleven. He's a guy who can twirl around there with a weightlessness that is so apparent in the way that he moves. It's so weird to see. Quinton Byfield is a guy who, even though he is big and he is heavy, he's six foot four, two hundred and fourteen pounds. He's a guy who acts like he's much smaller and nimbler out there. And he has that big size, so it's difficult to shove him off the puck. Okay, Lego, so we should take him because he's big, but he skates like he's small. Why? Is that enough of an argument? No, of course it's not. Well, Quinton Byfield is one of the youngest players of the draft. August 19th, 2002 is the birth date. He just wrapped up his second year in the OHL, gaining 82 points in 45 games. Yeah, that's a lot of points. Quinton Byfield is a guy who, ever since he was 16, he was touted as a top prospect in the 2020 NHL draft. Since he was 16, he was following the same path in Toronto AAA hockey as Connor McDavid was, following in the same footsteps by going to the same agent, doing the same workout routines, and doing similar things. Except where Connor McDavid was known as a speedster who could just score at any way possible, Quinton Byfield was known as a man amongst boys. And that reputation carried over as he played some games in Junior A, before he stepped into Major Junior, and eventually debuted with the Sudbury Wolves. Now, Quinton Byfield is a guy who, honestly, has had some sky-high potential for a while. Just the way he is able to control the play, and just the way he is able to see things pan out, along with his puck skills, along with his stride, along with his powerful skating and his shot, he has all the makings for a number one franchise-defining NHL center. And the Los Angeles Kings have a chance at getting that player. Well, Lego, if he's so good, why did people say that he shouldn't go second overall when you made your mock draft video yesterday? Well... Honestly, I don't know. If I had to guess, it's because at the World Juniors, he only had one point in seven games. At the same time, he was used in a bottom six role, he wasn't getting ice time, and he was one of the youngest players on the team. Quinton Byfield having a poor World Juniors at 17 years of age to me is not enough to shove him down the draft rankings, and the same argument could honestly be used for Lafreniere. 
Now hold your horses, Lafreniere is in this draft. What do you mean, Lego? Lafreniere is a guy who was born in October of 2001. Byfield, August 2002. Byfield is literally almost an entire year younger. Lafreniere was on the World Junior Squad this past season and he was amazing, yes. But he was 18. Lafreniere also was on the World Juniors one year ago when he was 17, and he saw similar deployment issues and development issues that Quinton Byfield saw at this year's World Juniors. Even though they're in the same draft class, the fact is Byfield is a year behind in terms of progression compared to Lafreniere. And when it comes to what Lafreniere did at the World Juniors last season, it's exactly the same as what Byfield did this season. And that's why, to me, even though he had one point in seven games, that's not enough for me to shove him down draft rankings, because everything that Quinton Byfield has within his game, the toolbox he has, the point contributions he's able to do, how he makes his teammates better around him, and how he's able to control the play at his own pace, these are all elite traits, and he's been labeled like this for years now. So for the LA Kings to take a look at a center and say, oh no, we're not going to take him because he's a center, you'd be foolish to do so. What do all cup contending teams have? You guys should know this. You guys were winning cups a few years ago. You guys have a lot of centers. And there's nothing wrong with loading up on Turcotte, Villardi, Madden, Anderson Dolan, Thomas, and Byfield. Swap a few of those guys onto the wing, and all of a sudden you have a very diverse and talented forward core. There's no secret that centers are normally, just in terms of contextual circumstances, more well-refined players than wingers are. That's just a very general thing. And to have guys who have developed at center their entire careers and shift them over to the wing, it allows them to capitalize on what makes them great as centers, while also maintaining the qualities that allowed them to excel at center, such as backchecking, defensive pressure, and awareness. Quinton Byfield needs to work on a lot of these things because he's still young, he's 17, and he's so raw that I honestly think that he could use another year in the OHL. But, as we noted in the mock draft video yesterday, the Kings don't need a Byfield-like player to come out of this draft immediately, especially on the positional side of things, because they have Turcotte, potentially Madden, and Velarde already filling those positional leads next year. So for Byfield, you can play the long-term game. And the long-term game sees Byfield as a potential 70, 80, 90, 100 point player if he pans out the way that he can. Because a game like Byfield's is so unique, it's like he has the power of an Eric Lindros, but he has the finesse of somebody completely outside of the world of Eric Lindros. He has the finesse of other powerful guys like Evgeny Malkin. He's that kind of player. And you win with those kinds of players. So for LA to get a guy like Quinton Byfield coming onto their organization, it's a gift. You guys were not supposed to be up here. You guys jumped up a few spots in order to get over here. And I applaud you guys for that, because Quinton Byfield is going to be a monster in the NHL. It's difficult to take him off of pucks. It's difficult to shut him down, because he's just so good at doing hockey that I don't know what else there is to say. It's just, Alexi Lafreniere is a guy who most people would say is more NHL ready and who is a lot more safer in that regard. Because Lafreniere plays a somewhat more physical and a somewhat more straight up style of play that's more projectable to the NHL level short term and more guaranteed to sustain itself for a longer term period, which is why Byfield isn't necessarily ranked first overall amongst most people's opinions. Also, Lafreniere was really good at the World Juniors and that, whether you like it or not, plays a part in people's public perception. So that's why Byfield isn't ranked number one, but the thing is, there are people online, there are scouts, there are media who do legitimately believe that Byfield, if he was drafted number one overall, it would not be a terrible decision. Because the upside of this kind of player is so, so large. And if you have a guy like this setting up Arthur Kalia for the next 10 years, then hey, you're set. You have Alex Turcotte on your second line, Gabriel Velarde on the wing with a Tyler Madden on your third line, then that's great. Or maybe, no, switch that up. Tyler Madden's a small guy. Put him on the wing. Velarde in the middle. All of a sudden, your team is amazing again. Five years from now. Have these guys grow up alongside of each other and develop their skills together. And all of a sudden, you have a team that looks to be as scary as the 2014-2016 Kings were in the past. And I would not like to see that again as a Vancouver Canucks fan who also is in the Pacific Coast. 
So LA Kings fans, talk to me in the comment section below. Have I made my pitch for Quinton Byfield? Do you feel like this kind of player is appropriate for your team? And if not, why? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below what you think. Social Life 99. And bye. <laughs>